Kids have been heading back into the classroom for the last week and more will continue to head back to the school in the next week as well. For tonight's conversation, we're joined by Dr. Josh Ranham, an internist with West River Medical Center. Dr. Ranham, thanks for being here again. Thank you for having me again. So, yeah, certainly. Now the school year, we're seeing a surge of COVID cases as this year begins. What advice do you have for parents as we head back into the classroom? Yeah, certainly this year, uh, the school year, another school year uh, affected by COVID uh, brings, brings a different set of challenges. Uh, we've seen across the Southern United States as they go back to school a little bit earlier than, than we do, that there has been uh, more cases among the younger uh, kids than there had been in, in all of 2020. So uh, Delta is uh, unfortunately alive and well and, and can affect uh, uh, younger kids. So uh, you know the primary advice that, that we would have would just have, have a very low threshold for having your child uh, be tested. Um, you know, COVID in kids. You know, fortunately, it is is mostly uh, well tolerated, but it, it certainly can be serious in some cases. Uh, what we're worried about is the continued ongoing spread. So, if there's any, you know, cough, cold, illness, especially in a cluster uh, among the classroom, you know, please remove the child from school, have them get tested to ensure that we're not uh, spreading it uh, back and forth. Yeah, you touched on a couple, but do you have any more tips for parents and kids on being conscious of spreading COVID? So, um, you know, we, we, we continue that. I, I just reviewed the American Academy of Pediatrics guidelines before uh, coming on today, and uh, they, they still do recommend masks. I know that's a, a whole, um, you know, half hour town hall uh, in, and, in and of itself. Um, but as, as cases ramp up, I do think we're going to see the, uh, reconsideration of, of mass policies and you, you know parents of students that are that are concerned can certainly uh, have their kids wear masks in school that still has a role um, you know schools have been through this they, they've got some you know mitigation strategies in place in terms of uh, distancing and contact and all that um, what I've noticed across the state right now a lot of those things are, are kind of on pause until we get more cases well you know they they are coming um and, and certainly the the primary recommendation that we have to limit the risk of spread and limit the risk of severe illness is for all eligible patients to receive the covid vaccine um, that includes you know adult staff members of the school and, and and kids over the age of 12 for which the uh the pfizer vaccine has fda approval now and doctor I'm, i don't have the power to do this but i'm going to give you an honorary doctorate in philosophy right now because i want to put this question to you we had the FDA approval of the vaccine, the Pfizer vaccine yesterday. At the same time, we all want to be mindful of our, of our individual liberties, but we know that the vaccine is the most effective tool, and yet people don't want to take the vaccine. Some people don't. So how do we balance out trying to end this pandemic and benefit the common good? It's the, uh, it's, it's, Certainly, the hot topic in uh, in, in the world right now is is how, how do we balance those two things? Um, you know, if we look back through our history, even our, our very libertarian founding fathers, Alexander Hamilton, you know, had the first uh, vaccine mandate for the smallpox vaccine for the troops of the Revolutionary War. Uh, you know, certainly. Uh, widespread use of vaccinations has been wholly embraced by our society uh, in in pandemics and, and, and epidemics past. Um, you know, one has to think or read back on the uh, polio uh, epidemic of the 1950s, and the uh, news of vaccination was greeted with church bells and and um, you know significant uh, uh, celebration. Um, you know, I think the big thing that we ask is is everybody has a role uh, to play in in preventing uh, the transmission of COVID, uh, even if they are at individual uh, low risk of disease. This is a societal based effort and um, everybody's, it's like pixels on a screen, everybody's individual effort combines to create the whole picture or, you know, in this case, the, the, the whole immunity. So, you know, what we're asking is people to sort of look outside the two square feet that they, uh, that they stand in and, and look at the bigger picture and, and, um, you know, do their part for society and, and, and let us get back to uh, a post-COVID, I guess we won't get back to it, but get, get to a post-COVID uh, existence. 
Okay. Dr. Rand, that's all the time we have. Thanks and best of luck. Thank you again.